Hi everyone, this presentation covers the mole, which is a counting unit used in chemistry. A mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 representative particles. And a representative particle, uh, this is going to be determined based on what type of bonding is present in a chemical substance. For example, ionic compounds, uh, the representative particle is a formula unit. For elements, we are talking about atoms as the representative particles. And for covalently bonded substances, we are talking about molecules. This slide illustrates how pictures can be used to explain how a balanced chemical equation shows conservation of mass. For the balanced equation, we have methane CH4 plus oxygen O2 produces CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, and H2O, which is water. Uh, we can balance this equation and determine the ratio will be 1, 2, 1, 2. This can be illustrated in the picture shown below where one molecule of methane uh, will react with two molecules of diatomic oxygen producing one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. So what are moles and why is it that they're so important in chemistry? We know that moles are a counting unit used in chemistry. Um, it's similar to a dozen except instead of 12, it's a very, very large number. Here written in standard notation, so you can see that it's a lot easier to write this in scientific notation, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. The number was named in honor of Amadeo Avogadro, who studied quantities of gases and discovered that no matter what the gas was, there were the same number of molecules or particles present. This allowed for scientists to determine and relative masses of the elements, and this is the type of information that sparked the thinking of Dmitry Mendeleev when he created the first periodic table. So what does one mole mean? If we're talking about gold, we would be talking about 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. One mole of oxygen would contain Avogadro's number of O2 molecules. Uh, same would go for one mole of diatomic chlorine. One mole of methane would contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methane. Now if we're talking about ionic substances, uh, now we're talking about formula units. So one mole of sodium chloride would have uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 formula units of sodium chloride, or we could say that it has one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. Uh, for one mole of calcium chloride, there would be one mole of calcium ions and two moles of chloride ions. Um, additionally, one mole of any substance which is a gas will have a volume of 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. Uh, now standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is 100 kilopascals, which is approximately one atmosphere of pressure. So let's calculate the molar mass of a compound. Our example will be to calculate the mass of one mole of methane, CH4. To determine the molar mass of this compound, we would figure out that there is one mole of carbon atoms. This would be 12 grams. Uh, technically, we could say 12.01 grams. And uh, the four moles of hydrogen atoms would have a mass of 4.04 .04 grams. Uh, this would give a total mass of 16.05 grams uh, for one mole of methane. I'd like for you to practice a molar mass calculation. Please try to calculate the mass of one mole of aluminum hydroxide. You can pause playback and then check your answer after completing your work. So here's that molar mass calculation completed. We can see that the molar mass of aluminum hydroxide would work out to be 78.01 grams per mole. Next, let's try some mole conversion problems. In these three problems, you will first attempt to convert uh, from number of atoms to moles, uh, then from number of grams of silver into moles of silver, then from moles of water into grams of water. Let's look at a uh, tool that we can use to help us determine how to do these types of calculations. I like to call it the mole bucket. So here's a look at the mole bucket. We can see that we can use Avogadro's number for calculations involving number of particles. We can also use the mole bucket to calculate the volume of a gas using the molar volume of, ga of a gas at STP conditions. And finally, we can use molar mass in order to calculate between moles and the mass in grams of any chemical substance. 
So we can see here the work that was required to complete those three problems. Uh, we have 3,458 atoms. We're going to use Avogadro's number to convert this from number of atoms to number of moles. Uh, we would calculate an answer of 5.742 times 10 to the minus 21 moles. Uh, our second problem was 13 grams of silver. We know that one mole of silver will have a mass of 107.87 grams. That's from the periodic table. This would allow us to calculate an answer of 0.12 moles. Uh, finally, 0.25 moles of water. We calculate a molar mass for water, 16, plus 2.02 .02 for a molar mass of 18.02, .02 allows us to calculate number of grams of water to be 4.5. Uh, please note the importance of sig figs. Uh, because this number has four sig figs, our answer should have four sig figs. Because 13 grams of silver has two sig figs, we want to report two sig figs in our answer. Because 0.25 moles of water has two sig figs, we should be reporting two sig figs in our calculated solution to that problem. Here are a couple of additional mole conversion problems. Uh, why don't you try to convert 3.1 moles of sulfur dioxide into molecules and 32 liters of krypton into moles of krypton. Please pause playback and try these problems on your own. Here are the solutions for those mole conversion problems. We can see that 3.1 moles of sulfur dioxide, uh, we're going to want to use again Avogadro's number. One mole of sulfur dioxide is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Uh, this allows us to calculate an answer of 1.87 times 10 to the 24 molecules of SO2. We should actually round our answer here to 1.9 times 10 to the 24 to account for uh, the given starting amount having two sig figs. Uh, then our second problem. 32 liters of krypton. We will use the molar volume of a gas because krypton is a noble gas. Uh, we know that one mole will have a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. This allows us to calculate an answer of 1.4 moles of krypton. To calculate a percent composition from formula, we're going to need to use a molar mass for a compound. Since we calculated the molar mass of methane earlier, we'll use that as our example here. Um, now, the molar mass of methane was 16.05 grams per mole. Uh, in that, we would have one mole of carbon atoms with a mass of 12.01 grams, and there would be four moles of hydrogen atoms with a mass of 4.04 grams. So the percent composition uh, mass-wise of carbon in this compound would be 12.01 divided by 16.05. Uh, to give us this decimal form, we'll just multiply by 100 to find 74.83 percent, uh, reporting here four sig figs because of the values that I have. Uh, for the hydrogen number, uh, 4.04 grams divided by 16.05 to calculate 25.2 percent. Uh, here only reporting three sig figs because there were three sig figs in the mass of uh, one mole of hydrogen atoms. Now it's your turn to calculate the percent composition of a chemical compound. I would like for you to try to do this using calcium phosphate as your example. Please pause playback and attempt this problem on your own. Here is the solution to that percent composition problem using calcium phosphate as our compound that we were using. Uh, we have calcium. Uh, calculating the mass from that would be 120.24 from phosphorus, 61.94 from the oxygen, 128.00 to get a total molar mass of 310.18 grams. Then to calculate the percent from each of the individual elements, we will take the part for calcium, 120.24, divide by the whole, in this case the molar mass, uh, to find 38.765% for calcium. For phosphorus, it works out to be 19.97%, and for oxygen, it works out to be 41.266%. In class, we will do further discussion about how significant figures are used in calculations such as this one. Another calculation type we will work on is percent composition from experimental data. So here's our example scenario. We have a metal which is uh, being reacted. It's oxidizing in an experiment. Uh, and we're using iron. So the starting mass of the iron was 0.279 grams, and the ending mass of the compound produced, uh, which would be iron oxide, was 0.359 grams. What is the percent composition of the iron oxide compound? So what mass comes from iron? What mass comes from oxygen as compound? Please pause playback and try to do this calculation on your own. 
Here's a look at the solution to that particular question. Uh, we can see that when the iron is oxidizing, it would produce either iron 2 or iron 3 oxide. So I'm using X and Y to indicate that we're not sure exactly which compound is being formed. Uh, we would know that the mass of the iron was 0 0.279 grams. The mass of the oxygen could be found by subtracting the mass of the iron alone from the mass of the iron oxide compound. So we would calculate a mass of oxygen being 0 0.080 grams. Uh, to determine the percent from iron, we would take the mass of the part, the iron, 0.279 grams, divided by the mass of the whole, 0.359, multiplied by 100, to calculate 77.7 percent. Please note here we can calculate this to three significant figures. Uh, the oxygen mass, because it was found by subtraction, would give us only two significant digits. Uh, so we would divide that mass of 0 0.080 grams by the mass of the total compound, 0.359 grams, uh, to calculate a percentage with two significant digits of 22 percent oxygen in this compound. Empirical formulas provide the lowest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. This can be used for ionic compounds, uh, also for covalently bonded molecules as well. Um, ionic formulas are always going to be empirical formulas. For some molecular compounds like glucose, we can reduce the ratio of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen here to a ratio of 1 to 1, so the empirical formula would be CH2O. Hydrogen peroxide would have an empirical formula of HO. Uh, so here's our goal. We want to find the empirical formula of a compound, which is 25.9 percent nitrogen and 74.1 percent oxygen. This would be percentages by mass. Uh, so to do this, we will assume a 100 gram sample, which would mean that we have 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 one grams of oxygen in our sample. Um, our first step is that we would like to find the number of moles for each element. Uh, we will then divide the number of moles for each element by the smaller of the two values, and then we'll determine the ratio of the two elements. Uh, so I'd like you to pause playback and attempt this calculation on your own. So here's a look at the work for solving that empirical formula problem. We know that we have uh, assumed a mass of 25.9 grams of nitrogen. Uh, one mole of nitrogen would be 14.01 grams. So this would allow us to calculate that there are 1.85 moles of nitrogen in our uh, imaginary sample. Then we would use the mass of 74.1 grams of oxygen, converting that to moles using the molar mass of oxygen to calculate 4.63 moles of oxygen. Now again, I want to divide uh, both of these values by the smaller of the two, dividing 1.85 by itself would produce a number of 1. 4.63 divided by 1.85 will give a value of 2.5. That's rounded off a little bit. So what do I do with these numbers to determine the empirical formula of the compound? Well, here's, here's my bright idea. I'm going to multiply both of my values, 1 and 2.5, by 2. Uh, this will produce a value here of 2. Here we'll get a value of 5. Uh, so I can determine that the ratio of nitrogen and oxygen in this compound would be N2O5. The final concept that we'll look at is how we can calculate molecular formulas from experimental data. Uh, so a molecular formula is going to tell us how many atoms of each element are found in a molecule of a compound. Uh, again, we have an example of a molecular compound being something like glucose, C6H12O6. The molecule of glucose would actually contain six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. Uh, now, benzene is the molecule that we want to take a look at. Benzene has an empirical formula of CH, and it can be experimentally determined to have a molar mass of 78 grams. Uh, so this information, when used together, could help us to calculate the molecular formula of benzene. Pause playback, and I'd like for you to try to figure out how you would do this. So here's my molecular formula work. Uh, let's assume that we had only one carbon and one hydrogen in a molecule of benzene. Well, if that was true, the mass would work out to be only 13 grams. Remember, carbon is 12 and hydrogen is 1. Uh, so I know that that's not right. I need a molar mass of 78 grams based on the information from the previous slide. So I need some kind of multiplier to get me to that mass of 78. Uh, so I can divide that molar mass that I'm looking for, 78, uh, by the um, mass that I would get by using just the one-to-one -one ratio of carbon and hydrogen. So 78 divided by 13 uh, gives me a multiplier of 6. So if I try this, uh, I'm going to come up with a molecular formula of C6H6. Um, and if I were to calculate the uh, molar mass of C6H6, I would come up with a mass of 78 grams. And um, I can see uh, here, this is a representation of how the benzene molecule is actually put together. It is a 
six-membered ring. It's carbons all the way around uh, with alternating single and double bonds. And every carbon, because it needs to form four bonds, will also be bonded to a hydrogen atom. So we can see that this structure right here helps us to explain um, how C6H6 uh, can come together to form benzene. We will be using the mole bucket very frequently in class. I would like for all students to take a little bit of time after completing this lecture assignment to turn to the short answer prep page in your unit packet. And you should be copying the information that is present in this video to question number two, which asks that you draw the mole bucket diagram, which was illustrated in class.